The primary greenhouse gases in the Earth's atmosphere are water vapor, carbon dioxide, nitrous oxide, methane, and ozone. Each of them are essential to absorb and emit radiation, and without them, the average temperature of the Earth's surface would be much colder than it is now. However, with the increasing concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, which is the result of human activity, the greenhouse gas balance was disturbed. This increase became the number one cause for global climate change. As the greenhouse gas emissions increase, an even larger buildup of carbon dioxide occurs in the atmosphere, thus warming the climate further. As discussed, the built environment contributes to 67% of all greenhouse gas emissions. This comes from building systems and energy use, transportation, water use, changes in the land cover, building products, and construction. Although changing the way we build will play a significant role in reducing the greenhouse gas emissions, merely developing green buildings will not be enough. To establish a lower carbon rate, we need to develop green communities as well. The first thing that a green community should implement is the reduction of the distances that vehicles travel. The buildings in the suburban areas, even if they are green buildings, create greenhouse gas emissions due to the long distances that people drive every day. Additionally, emissions from transportation make up half of the total emissions associated with the project. This also means that the project location is another critical factor to consider when developing a green building. The LEED for Neighborhood Development Rating System is designed to establish green communities, which will be discussed in later chapters. To take our discussion to the next level, we will now discuss the common sources of greenhouse gas emissions. This table is also important to know for the exam purposes. The sources of greenhouse gas emissions are grouped under three scopes. A scope 1 energy relates to the direct energy from the owned or controlled sources, while a scope 2 energy relates to the purchased energy and Scope 3 energy relates to energy sources that are not owned or directly controlled. To illustrate, the energy generated on site through burning of fossil fuels will fall under Scope 1 energy, and the resulting greenhouse gas emissions will be classified as a Scope 1 emission. Or, the electricity bought from a utility company will be classified as a Scope 2 energy, and the resulting greenhouse gas emission will be a Scope 2 emission.